Funny thing is, is I was cleaning in the kitchen and, and my wife came by and, and, and we have one of those, anybody ever heard of those Google homes where it kind of, you talk to it and it plays music and things like that, you know what I'm talking about? Well, she goes by and she goes, hey, Google, play uh, Christmas music. Anybody playing Christmas music in the house yet? Oh, yeah, I got one. I got one Christian, one Benedict there. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Christmas music is fun to play in 2020 a little early. I'm just saying, let's get Christmas here. So we were playing Christmas music, and, uh, you know, you can't play it if Wi-Fi doesn't work. And so Google says, I'm sorry, we're having trouble connecting. Well, I'm excited. The Lord is doing some great things in 2020, and I don't care what you've heard. Uh, whose report will you believe? That's what the Lord says. Yeah. Whose report will you believe? Because somebody is telling you a lie that this is not the year of the favor of the Lord. That's right. oh. But this is the year of the favor of the Lord, and the reason I know that is because Christ paid for it. Amen? Yes. Come on. And so, when circumstances and storms around us tell us otherwise, I believe there's something that we can do about it. And I believe that God placed His Holy Spirit inside of us as ambassadors to speak truth. Amen? Amen. And we've been in a series called Just Sowing, uh, uh, Reaping for Joy. And we've been talking about family. We've been talking about just sowing as far as... Um, uh, as far as just making sure that we're doing things as unto the Lord. And then today the Lord put on my heart something, and I believe it's uh, for today, and I believe it's no accident that you're here. And if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Romans 10, 5. And while you're turning there, this week, or last week, we had a horrible week, and I'll tell you why. And some of you have heard this, or maybe you've experienced this, but our Wi-Fi went out. I'm, a, I'm telling you, y'all pray for us. Wi-Fi went out, and it was like, you ever seen those zombie shows where people start coming out of the house? It was like the whole street just started coming out. Like, you out? You out? You out? Yeah, I'm out. You out? You out? Everybody's just coming out of the house, and it had been down in the whole neighborhood. And, you know, we, we talked to the service and said, well, it's going to be a few days. Days! Days! Yeah, and our hotspot wasn't even working. Dana's pointing out the hotspot wasn't even working. So... Funny thing is, is I was cleaning in the kitchen and, and my wife came by and, and, and we have one of those, anybody ever heard of those Google homes where it kind of, you talk to it and it plays music and things like that, you know what I'm talking about? Well, she goes by and she goes, hey Google, play uh, Christmas music. Anybody playing Christmas music in the house yet? Oh yeah, I got one, I got one Christian, one Benedict there. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Christmas music is fun to play in 2020 a little early. I'm just saying, let's get Christmas here. So we were playing Christmas music and uh, you know, you can't play it if Wi-Fi doesn't work. And so Google says, I'm sorry, we're having trouble connecting. It was funny because now this is how we were checking to see if the Wi-Fi worked. Hey, Google. Because if Google was talking, we knew we were connected. So I'm, I've got a point today that talks about there is something that Christ has put inside of us to know that we're connected to him. Amen. There's something in us that lets us know, hey, we're connected. And then we look in Scripture in Romans 10. Everybody there say amen. amen. It says, Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks. Law of Moses lives. Righteousness of faith speaks. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. So Father, right now I'm asking you, Lord, we just don't want to, we want to hear you speak. Father, we thank you, Lord, that righteousness of faith speaks. Lord, we just open our hearts to hear this morning. We thank you for speaking to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul was talking, and when he's speaking here, he's talking to the church, and yet at the same time he's teaching them how to step out of law and he's teaching them how to step out into faith and the righteousness of faith is different than the law and the reason we know that is because Paul says it right here that the righteousness of law they the man who does these things shall live by them so there's a you know, there's a doing there's a performance and then the righteousness of faith speaks the righteousness of faith yes. speaks and so I need you to hear this. The kingdom of God, the new covenant, is all about speaking. Come on. Yes. It's voice activated. Yes. Hey, Google. 
And what he did is he, he placed a Wi-Fi inside of you that you're never disconnected. Come on. See, under the old covenant, you could, you, could, you could do something, your performance, and the Holy Spirit would have to leave. In the new covenant, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Paul was talking to the church saying, do you not know that you're the house of Wi-Fi? <laughs> that you're the connection to the world? Do you not know how to voice operate this thing? And so if you're taking notes, the righteousness of faith is voice activated. Amen. Yes, it is. In verse 7, he says, this is what do not say in your heart who will ascend. In verse 6, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. In other words, that is to bring Christ down. So what's he saying here? He's saying, do I have to do I have to send him to heaven to to have Wi-Fi service? Do I have to do I have to get into a place where where I can get Jesus up here? Do I have to go down to the abyss? Is Jesus still dead? I mean, he's talking practical to them. See, I'm talking practical to you. You know what it's like when your cell phone's not working. I got to get near the router. I got to get near the router. I got to find the router. Hang on, I got one bar. Hang on, two bars, three bars. Hang on, hang on. Wait, I can't hear you. Now I can hear you. Am I the only one that plays this game? <laughs> no. So what Jesus did is he placed you as the router. You are the Wi-Fi. Never disconnected. Yes. Never Voice did. activated. Yes. You know what, what? Instead of saying, hey, Google, you know what you say? Hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Right. Boom! <laughs> Standing in the throne of grace. Wow. I come confidently. Yes. Yeah. And it's not like there's some humility there. Great. Listen, when I'm standing before the throne, I'm telling you, snot bubbles coming out. I mean, eyes are watering. Y'all think I have it together on the stage, but I'm telling you, between me and Jesus, he, he talks to me about some things. Wrecks me. Come on, yes. But it says, come confidently before the throne of grace. In other words, I'm not going, well, do I have a good connection? How many bars do I have? I don't even know if he can hear me. Can he? You can hear me. You ever had a conversation with someone and it's just, oh, I told you that. And, I can, and don't you forget. What? What? Yeah. I used to have a horrible self. I'm so glad I moved. My cell service is better. And this is what Paul said in verse 7. Who will descend into the abyss? Saying, don't say these things to bring Christ up from the death. But what does it say? What does the word righteousness say? The word is how close to you? Near you. Near you. It's closer than your skin. In your where? Mouth. Mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And some churches are preaching, listen, let's get out of here because we're trying to get to heaven. I'm telling you that heaven is now inside of you. So this isn't about let's get out of here. This is about letting heaven and voice activating heaven onto earth. That's right. Doesn't mean our soul doesn't want to be in heaven. Paul had this, this, you know, where he was just, he's tired, worn out. His body is is, is worn out. And so his soul is saying, you know, I, I want to be with Christ. And you'll hear, I mean, as pastors get older, I hear them. They're talking more and more about being with Jesus. And I get that because as our bodies get older, we want to be with Jesus. I get that. But our spirit is seated in heavenly places. And so... Bless the Lord, I want to be spirit-led, not soul-led. You follow me here? I want to be led by my spirit. If the Lord says it's time, it's time. But he took you and I and placed us in a timeline of any time. He could have done it, and he put us in 2020. Yeah, come on. What did he put us here for? To voice activate faith. Upon the earth. That's good. Verse 
Verse 10 says, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, voice activation, confession is made unto salvation. Sozo, wholeness. Yeah, wholeness. Like I'm praying God for things you guys think, well, you got it together. No, man, I'm praying for things to be whole in every area of my life. Christ is, we're on a journey together. He's shown me how to overcome in every area, not just one area, not just, okay, I've got my ticket to heaven. I'm talking about heaven to earth overcoming. Yeah. I'm learning. And it's fun. It's fun to do this with Jesus. So number two, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they work in unity to activate life with words. That's how they operate. In Genesis, we see it right in the beginning. We see God activating with his words. He activates. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Look at the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God performed. No. What did he do? He voice activated. He said, this is your father. This is my father. This is what he does. He says and things create. That's right. When we see Jesus on the earth, he was speaking life. After the resurrection, the disciples were hiding. They were practicing their isolation. In John 20, 19, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. They were scared. They were, they were terrified. They weren't getting out. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, also I send you. This is one of the things Jesus was great at. Last week, if you missed the message, it was talking about dependence, spiritual growth from dependence to independence to interdependence. So Jesus was dependent on Mary and Joseph to change his diaper. We never see in scripture where the angels came and they took the diaper away. Never see that. That was Mary and Joseph staying up late, taking care of baby Jesus. And that messes with religious people because yeah. he was dependent. Okay? And then he's independent. He's in the temple. He's learning about scripture. He's spending time. He said, well, hey, parents lost me. His parents lost him. Anybody ever lost a kid? Yes. We all have. I'm hoping. Maybe it was just me. But he says, you should have known. I was in my father's house. So he's learning to be independent. Just him and God. Then there's interdependence. He, he asked the disciples to come along with them. Says that, that instead of just taking money from, from uh, the fish's mouth, he invites the women, the business women, to invest in his ministry. I mean, that's unheard of in that day. And so he's including people. And then, because he's ascending into heaven, before he goes... What does he do? He breathes on the disciples. He's like, what I got, you can have. And then look at it together. Let's look at it together. In verse 22, he breathed on them and he said, voice activation, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. When did they receive the Holy Spirit? When Jesus' voice activated, they received the Holy Spirit. Now, some of y'all think, okay, well, Acts. I'm telling you, voice activation happens the moment Jesus says something. The moment the Father says something, it happens. Now, manifestation, we see it in Acts. In fact, let's turn there together in Acts 2-2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came, does it say a spirit? Does it say suddenly the Holy Spirit finally filled the disciples? Is that what it says? Nope. nope. A sound. Because Jesus had breathed on the disciples' voice activation, 
He passed to them the Holy Spirit. Guess what happened when he passed the Holy Spirit on to them? This is the same thing that happened in Genesis. You remember this? God breathed on Adam. And the disciples had a new heart. They're a new creation. The new covenant has taken place. So what's going on in Acts? Guys, anybody ever been to a cave? I went to New Mexico when I was a kid. We go to New Mexico and Colorado, and my favorite thing was to find caves. You know what the first thing I'd do in a cave when I was a kid? You'd yell. I wanted to yell, and it took a second or two for it to come back to me. See, I voice activated in the cave, and then I could hear it back. Jesus voice activated the Holy Spirit, said, okay, receive the Holy Spirit. And then they're up, up in the upper room, and it doesn't say it. Acts 2 doesn't say that. And then the Spirit came and says a sound came. So they're full of the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden they begin to pray, speak. They start seeing tongues of fire. A sound like a mighty rushing wind comes in. See, some of y'all have a word from the Lord. <laughs> And it hasn't bounced off the cave yet. I'm saying it was voice activated. And, and the Lord's going, hey, will you partner with me? Will you become co-laborers in voice activation with me? Yeah. Because I've given you a voice. See, it's one thing for dad to say something. It's another thing for the kids to come along beside dad and start speaking in the same language. Right. See, when, when, when this COVID hit, I said, you know, wouldn't it be a great idea if we just followed the word and laid hands on the sick and we shall recover? And my wife said, well, let's come together as a family. Let's make sure our family, that all our kids agree with this because I've got a son that he's had asthma. But, you know, we want to make sure that he agrees that we're going to stand as a family and lay hands on the sick. Because what good does it do if I do it? Hey, it's my faith. It's just me. It's me and Jesus. So I'm going to lay hands on the sick and I'll leave people behind. What if I get my son to say it? So my son, I'm telling you, we went around the room and my son's like, well, we're going we're gonna to do what the Bible says. Because the Bible says this. And I was like, man, I didn't even tell him to say that. That was his idea. That was his thought. Right. You see what I'm saying? We're voice activating. So all of 2020, all we're doing is, hey, it's not that no weapon can be formed against you. It's no weapon that's formed against you can prosper. That's right. So we're not going, hey, we can't get COVID. Right. That's not what we're doing. We're saying whatever comes against us, the Lord has our back. That's right. Right. Yes. Number three, you were created to activate, activate life on earth with your words. I sent a son off to college. He'll be back this Friday, and I'm excited, super excited he'll be back. But I can't go to college and take tests for him. Huh. Nor do I want to. <laughs> Nor does he want me to take a test for him. <laughs> My goodness, he does not want me taking calculus. <laughs> but I want him speaking the things that I would speak. And a, and a home is a safe place to learn how to speak. Church should be a safe place to learn how to speak. When people are talking about faith, we come beside them and we say, you know what, I'm going to believe with you. See, I, I, the Lord gave me a word this morning, and I was arguing with myself that it was the Lord. See, some of y'all think, well, pastor, you're super spiritual. But I'm telling you, in my mind, I was playing like, that. is that God? I don't know if that's God. The word was, God's healing this person's needs. But in my mind, I'm thinking, well, he may not have any need problems. <laughs> then I look stupid, God. You know what God told me? Are you okay with looking stupid? <laughs> Come on. What are you, new with looking stupid? <laughs> <laughs> you realize, that's not what he said, that's my thought, by the way. <laughs> We don't want to look stupid. So we want voice activate. This is 
2020 is the best year for children. I'm telling you. Because you can speak into their life and tell them to speak into what's going on in the situation. And then you just step back and let daddy do his thing. And some of you know that, that last year we were believing to be able to pay for college. It was a real thing. And I told my son, you got to just watch. God's going to do it. Watch. And he did it. My son can never go back and not say God didn't do something. You see, the promised land for the, for the Israelites to take their children and go, okay, you're going to go into the promised land. You know why the, gener the first generation, God promised them to go to the promised land. Why didn't the first generation go to the promised land? Because they didn't voice activate it. They were saying the wrong thing. Watching the news. You know how hot it is out here? You know how many snakes? We could die in this desert. You know how many giants? Have you seen on the news how many giants there are on the land? And just repeating back the bad reports. And then there were two people that had a good report and believed the word of the Lord. And those two voice activated what God said about the land. I'm encouraging you that this new covenant, righteousness and faith, speaks. The law was about doing performance. That's what Moses brought in. But Jesus brought in the new covenant. And he breathes and he speaks to us. I'm going to ask you to bow your head. You have